Build discipline by challenging yourself intentionally. Many Americans have really low levels of self-discipline precisely because they have made their lives as comfortable as possible. In fact, if you were to look at the typical ad shown on primetime TV in the United States, a recurring pattern appears. The ad would tell you about a product or a service that would make your life so much more convenient, easy, and simple. That is the promise, and people fall for this promise time and time again. For the most part, these are the cardinal values of modern American life. It's all about convenience. After all, we live in a society where we want our pizza in 15 minutes or we expect it to be absolutely free. Well, here's the problem. When you set an easy life for yourself, it only takes a very small amount of challenge for you to get totally thrown off track. You can't handle it. You can't withstand even the softest challenge. And this is precisely why a lot of kids nowadays have a tough time with discipline. We have gone soft. Well, if you want to build discipline, tighten things up a bit. Make it a little harder on yourself. Here are some basic day-to-day -day practical ways to challenge yourself on both a mental and physical level. These go hand in hand. You may be thinking that these are just physical challenges, but they also challenge you mentally. They can toughen you up mentally and emotionally so you are more likely to put up with a lot more inconveniences. Take cold showers. Make it a point to use only cold water when taking a shower. I know this might seem masochistic, but there's a hard logic to this. When you take a cold shower first thing in the morning, you wake up quickly. Second, you don't spend extra time in the shower. It quickly turns into a rapid in and out situation. You know that it's going to be cold. So, you soap up, you clean up, and you rinse off very quickly. In other words, you save a tremendous amount of time. Also, when you take cold showers, it enables you to focus mentally. You're not thinking about something else. You're not letting your emotions get the better of you. You're not suffering from any form of brain fog. Instead, you just want to start your shower and get out of there as soon as possible. You remain focused. This is a great way to start your day. This also toughens up your personal discipline because it would have been so much easier to take a nice warm shower. Wake up really early. How early? How about four or even three in the morning? Wake up as early as you can. When you wake up early, you actually tap into a tremendous amount of physical energy. Put this to good use by pairing it with some sort of daily morning exercise. When you wake up early, you are able to focus more clearly. The downside, of course, is that your body is going to put up a fight. This is where you build discipline. Let's face it, if given a choice, most people would rather keep clicking the snooze button on their alarm clocks. In fact, most people would rather stay in bed for hours on end. When you wake up really early, you challenge this part of your mindset. You commit to waking up by a certain time. It doesn't matter whether you woke up on the right side of the bed. It doesn't matter what you're feeling. It doesn't matter whether things are lined up properly. None of that matters. What matters is that when the clock says 3 a.m. or 4 a.m., you commit to waking up on time every time. This is a great way of using physical discipline to build up mental discipline and vice versa because they actually reinforce each other. You end up in a situation where even if you're feeling really tired and sleepy, you still get up because you're mentally disciplined. Some days you don't really feel like it, but your body has gotten so used to this routine that it wakes you up. So set this process in motion by choosing to wake up really early morning after morning, week after week, month after month, year after year. Park farther and farther from the entrance. I know this is going to ruffle a lot of feathers, especially with readers from California. In states like California, people have the luxury of huge parking lots. As you can well imagine, if you are going to Walmart or Costco, your number one instinct will be to find a parking slot that is as close to the entrance as possible. To build self-discipline, I want you to overcome and reverse this common mindset. Instead of driving around in circles trying to spy on a parking spot near the entrance that just opened up, make it a point to look at the farthest point of the parking lot and try to park as close to it as possible. At first, you probably would only park a few more extra yards away from the main entrance of the mall. That's fine. However, as the weeks go by, make it a point to park farther and farther away from the entrance. This should apply across the board. It doesn't matter whether you're going to Costco, to your office, or to some sort of sports venue. Exercise this. At first, it's going to be a hassle because you're used to looking for the nearest parking spot, but eventually, you'll get used to this. Eventually, you will see that when you park really far, you get to exercise, and you get to see the venue from a different perspective. You start to see the big picture. This can go a long way in totally changing your mindset. Reduce your snacks. Some people pretty much snack throughout the day. It doesn't matter whether you have more than three snacks or you only have one. 
make it a point to start dialing down the amount of snacks you enjoy every single day. For example, if you eat three major meals a day with snacks in between or a snack in the beginning and a snack at the end, you may be dealing with about five snacks per day. Dial that down to four. Get used to it. Once it feels natural and it becomes part of your routine, dial it down again to three. Repeat the same process. Get it down to two, then to one, then to zero. It can be done and it really all boils down to getting used to the process. You also get the additional benefit of losing weight because if you snack on sugary drinks, chances are the insulin peaks and crashes that you experience basically make you hungry throughout the day. If you were to get off that insulin treadmill, you can reduce your overall calorie intake day after day. Commit to reading a certain amount of words daily. A lot of people think that they read enough materials every single day. Unfortunately, these are just all estimates. They're basically just going with their moods. If you really want to become more disciplined, you have to put yourself on a hard quota regarding the amount of words you read every single day. You don't have to overdo it. You don't have to be a hero. Start with 1,000 extra words. This is basically just four pages of a typical hardbound book. Once that becomes comfortable, step it up to 1,500, then 2,000. Eventually, you should make it a point to read one 200-page book every week. You may be thinking that this is a lot, but if you went to college you know that this is actually nothing because in many courses you're expected to read four or five full books every single week. We're talking about hundreds and hundreds of pages. So, get up to one full book per week then try to double it after a few months, then try to double that after a few more months. Not only would this build up your practical levels of discipline, but it also helps ensure you become a more knowledgeable person. Your conversations become more interesting. You also get to deepen your personal knowledge and expertise. Why is this important? Well, we live in a modern information-based economy. The more information you have that other people don't possess, the more credible you become. This can translate into bigger paychecks and greater economic opportunities.